Hey everyone and welcome to the second ever Q&A here on the channel. My name is Estelle Nation and you, the viewers out there, have commented down below your questions and you guys are ready for them to be answered inside of this second Q&A for the channel for the 600 subscriber special. So we're just going to hop right into it. I'm only doing a couple questions for right now and then part two, we're going to do the rest of the questions. So we're going to get through High Five, 789, D-Man Made It, Devontae Thomas, Cows, XD Bricks, Giraffe Guy Studios, and 123 Legos. We're going to get through those questions today inside of this Q&A. All right, so we're going to start it off with High Five, 789. He has 20 questions, so we're just going to go through on the list. What do you think of the original time travel plot of the Lego Ninjago movie? I've seen the deleted scene. But uh, as of, you know, everything else, like researching it religiously, nah, I don't, I have really no thoughts on it. I'm glad how the movie turned out is my second favorite movie of all time. But the time travel plot, yeah, that's, that's a whole different story for me. I can't really give my thoughts on that because I don't know too much about it besides the, uh, besides the deleted scene that I saw. So, yeah. Number two, would you rather rewatch Arrow or The Flash? Arrow easy flash got a little bit boring inside of season four and five and a little bit of six but i still think that the first season of flash is still the best arrowverse season out of all 41 or 42 seasons at this point even superman and lois number three which ninjago season has the most wasted plot in your opinion the most wasted plot i mean season 14 man that's like the worst ninjago thing that i've ever seen until season 15 comes out and we see how the stories kind of connect it's like the worst the waste most wasted plot is season 14 and march of the oni too even though i like that season they have to depart it also so yeah there's a lot of seasons that have the most wasted plot but season 14 definitely number four what is your most controversial opinions i don't think avengers endgame is the best mcu film i don't think avengers endgame deserves all the hype that it gets i believe that some of that hype deserves to go to infinity war and uh winter soldier also i don't hate day of the departed i don't hate day of the departed actually uh, if you go back to my earlier rankings, Day of the Departed is actually higher than the pilots for me. So I, I really do like Day of the Departed. So I'm not a big hater of Day of the Departed. I don't think that it's necessarily terrible or trash. I just think that, you know, it's, it's a wasted plot. And I think the first Thor movie is great. I, I love the first Thor movie. It's score, it's theme, everything. I, I love the first Thor movie. So I think those are kind of like my controversial opinions. But what opinion is controversial if it's your own? So... Now, keep that in mind. At number five, will you rank every episode in Arrow, Flash, and Legends of Tomorrow season? Of course, each season separately. I know you've already done Arrow season eight. I don't know about that because for Arrow season eight, there was only 10 episodes. For the seasons, there's like 16 episodes for Legends of Tomorrow and then Flash and Arrow, there's like 22, 23. So that's, no, nah, that's hard for me to do, especially with me not rewatching the shows after this point and with me struggling behind the scenes here guys with me struggling to kind of rank the season 11 ninjago episodes and season 12 and season 13 because there are a lot of episodes and they're shorter contained so there's not much story inside of the episodes so that's just you know what how i see it so will i ever rank them that's up into the air but will i rank them as of right now no i have no plans to do so number six what would be your favorite TV show not made in U.S. or Canada? I don't watch any other shows out of outside of the U.S. Uh, Ninjago is my favorite show. Daredevil, Arrow. Those are all shows inside of the U.S. and in Canada and other places. But, you know, not made in U.S. or Canada? No, that's not. I don't watch any other shows outside of USA or Canada. So, no. Seven. What do you think of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode one? I thought that it was actually pretty entertaining. I like the action sequence that happened in the beginning. I do not think that it intrigued me as much as WandaVision did, but you know, I I enjoyed Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And still it was my number two most anticipated show. Actually in January 2020, when the show was supposed to come out in August, Falcon and the Winter Soldier was my number one. You guys can go over there and check out that ranking. I'm going to put a link in the description. You can check it out up above. All right, continue on with the question. And episode two, if it's out when you do your q and I personally was very disappointed. Oh, that sucks, man. You know, all TV shows, all film is subjective. All art is subjective. And that's what Falcon and the Winter Soldier is. That's what WandaVision was. It was art. And I feel like all art is subjective. So if you felt disappointed by it, 
hopefully this show can turn you around because I'm very much enjoying this show, especially with episode two. I'm not going to give my thoughts here because I've done a spoiler talk on the regular podcast. And also you guys can check out my Twitter that has all of my thoughts on the first two episodes. So yeah. What is your favorite open world game? Define open world. I like GTA. But I don't play GTA like that. But I like GTA. The Arkham games are pretty fun. Lego games are also pretty great too. But open world games, like open Lego games, I don't know if that's, I don't know, I don't even know if that's a thing. But open world games, I I love open world games. I think they're so much fun. But if I had to pick a favorite, GTA is like a go-to, right? I mean, that's like everybody's go-to. What would you think about an open world Ninjago game? And what do you think it would look like? Or in general, a Lego open world game? I think that would be fun. Actually, just an open world Ninjago game would be fun. We already have a Ninjago video game. Uh, We actually got a lot of Ninjago video games. But the one that I'm most concerned about is the Lego Ninjago movie video game. So I think an open world Ninjago game could be actually... it, It could be fun. It just depends on if the, you know, if... If Wild Brain or WB or even, you know, Tommy Andreasen want to sign off on that. But I think that it can actually be pretty fun. I think any type of media dealing with Ninjago could be fun and interesting. Do you play any Pokemon, Zelda, or Mario games? If yes, what is your favorite games in each series? Never played Pokemon, never played Zelda. Mario games? I gotta say Mario Party? Mario Party 9 is is great. That's like my childhood, Mario Party 9. And also uh, Super Mario 3D World. Super Mario 3D World, I played that on a 3DS. Oh my god, great game. I I loved Mario growing up. I even remember the Super Mario Brothers movie. I even got the DVDs. I don't have them now with me physically, but don't, don't worry. I will show them eventually. Um, yeah, I don't play Pokemon or Zelda, but I do have Pokemon cards. They're not with me. Again, they're somewhere stored safe. 11. What do you think of the old Ninjago Flash games? Uh, Ninjago Rush, Ninjago Possession, etc. Hashtag RP Flash games. Yeah, RP Flash games, man. Um, I never played many Flash games as of right now. Like, when I was younger, I, I've always played Flash games. We would always play Flash games in class. So, the Ninjago games... Never played the Flash Ninjago games, but I didn't even know they had Ninjago Flash games, but we would usually play Super Mario Brawl, or what was it, Super Smash Brawl or something, it was years ago, and we would also kind of play Minecraft and and Five Nights at Freddy's, so yeah, we would play those type of Flash games, but Ninjago, I don't have any thoughts on them because I didn't play them, you know? What are your favorite Ninjago games in general? Shadow of Ronin, obviously, I think that's probably the best one the lego ninjago movie video game is great too but i never did the battles i've never seen somebody play ninjago battles or but i've seen them play ninjroids ninjroids is the worst of the three because i've seen them play three of them and i've also played one of them and you guys can check that out on this channel i also have a playlist of that but yeah it's you know I think that the best one is Shadow of Ronin. Shadow of Ronin is just really good to me, even though I didn't play it. I think that the movie of it, like the movie cutscenes, the cutscene movie of it is it's just great to me. 13. What Ninjago season has the best ideas, not including how good that idea was used or how bad the idea was wasted? Okay. Uh, season 4? Season 4. Tournament of Elements has the best ideas, and it's mainly because, you know... They expand the elemental mythology a lot, and also you just get a lot of elemental masters. The fact that the team is coming together after being split up after Zane's death just to find Zane on this uncharted island with this crazy guy that's hosting a tournament of elements, an underground fight club where the team has to use their elemental abilities and they all get split up one by one. I think all of that was pretty good. Skybound has some great ideas also. So not saying how good the idea was used or how bad the idea was wasted, Skybound, uh, Possession, and also Tournament of Elements. Those three seasons, that trilogy, I, I thought was pretty good. And also the Oni and Dragon trilogy too. That that was pretty nice. Could you rank all MCU TV show seasons if you have seen them all? Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., seven seasons, Daredevil, three seasons, etc. I could rank them because I've seen them all. You know, I have I have not finished Inhumans. I remember when Inhumans came out, that god-awful Inhumans show. I remember when it came out. 
I saw the first episode, came back for the second episode, came back for the third episode. I recorded the fourth one, never watched it. That was all the way back in 2017. Cloak and Dagger, couldn't get past the first two episodes. Runaways, never even tried to watch it. Legion, mm -mm, not for me. So, yeah, I've seen Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and I've seen all the Netflix series, but I haven't I haven't even seen Agent Carter yet. I haven't got past the second episode of Agent Carter yet, which going on a year now because it's, we're in March. So, yeah, going on a year now, I, I'm, I haven't seen Agent Carter in like a year. So, yeah, I started in April of 2020. What superpower would you like to have? Oh, my God. Ooh. I mean, fire, as Kai being my favorite. Ninja fire is pretty cool. I mean, you could fly with it and stuff like that. But maybe super speed? I can go back in time, run. Yeah, I think super speed would be pretty good. And also super strength. But super strength comes with the super speed. Also super healing. And yeah, super speed, I, I think I think that's a great power to have. But if we're talking about elemental power, fire, obviously. I mean, energy is pretty great. Time is pretty good. But I mean... As Kai being my favorite ninja, I gotta rep him. I gotta go with fire. Where does your name, SW Nation, originate from? Or what inspired you to choose that name for your YouTube channel? Okay, we're getting into some personal details here. But my first name starts with an S. And my last name starts with a W. My teacher, she used to call me S Dub. And uh, in 2019, in 2019, before Endgame came out, the hype was real. I was like, I got to change my channel name. Like I when when people are watching my channel in the future, I and the, like their parent comes in and say, "Hey, what are you watching?" I want them to turn to their parent and say, "S Dub Nation, not Sterling Williams for life." <laughs> so yeah, if you guys go back to my earlier videos on my channel, you guys would know my real name, Sterling Williams for life, and that was the channel name and everything like that. But I think S Dub Nation got a nice ring to it. And yeah, I mean, it may be cheesy, it may be corny, but hey, it's my name and I love it. And, you know, it combines my first name and last name in a short little package. Nation, a stub nation, this this nation, this, the, you know, the people that comment, the people that viewer, my, my viewers and stuff like that. So I think all of that is pretty great. My subscribers, I, I think all of that is pretty great. 17. What do you think about the current situation with Corona? Ooh, I mean... It's, it's hard to say, I, you know, cases, we, we were declining in cases and then Florida people had to mess it up and we're not, we're, we're not going to get into many details about that. But all I got to say is that it's, it's a bad situation and I wish that things were better. We were going like there was light at the end of the tunnel and then the idea of spring break came up and now everybody want to go to Florida and Miami where the cases are the highest. And even people that know the cases are the highest there, they're still going to Florida and they're still messing it up for everybody here. And in other countries, they got their stuff together. Why can't, you know, the United States as a people? So that's my current, like, that's my current thoughts on Corona. I don't want to get too much into that. 18. What do you think about the Luca Pixar trailer? I thought it was actually pretty fun and entertaining. Um, I really wish that I could see it in the theater, but they're, it's going exclusively to Disney Plus, not for premiere access, which I really do like because I'm not paying $30 to see a Pixar film. I love Pixar. Toy Story 4 is the best Pixar movie to me. Toy Story, I have all of the Toy Story toys, except for Bullseye and Jesse. But I, I think that the Luca trailer, Pixar just does great stuff like this. When they do original stories, it's always pretty great. And I think that Luca... If it was in the theater, it could have broke at least 500 to 600 million. That's at least. But if it didn't, probably like 300 million, 200 million, around that margin. But I'm glad that it's going to Disney Plus at least. The only thing I'm really mad about that's going to Disney Plus is Black Widow because I want to see that on the big screen, which I am. I am going to see that on the big screen. Number 19. Are there movies you really want to see? But haven't seen them yet. Movies that are released, obviously. I mean, movies that aren't released. That's just you know, I I definitely want to see that. But um, movies that have been released. The Social Network. I've been trying to watch that, and I think another one was Knives Out. And also, I wanted to see Blade Runner movies. I wanted to see the Terminator movies. I wanted to see the Transformer movies, Mission Impossible movies, and also the James Bond movies. So those are kind of like the movies that I wanted to see. And also the 
the monster movies like Godzilla and Kong and the kaiju films. So that's the movie. Those are the movies that I really want to see. And I am going to watch those in the future. So look out for rankings and reviews of that stuff, especially for Godzilla vs. Kong, because that's the next movie review on this channel. What's your favorite video game genre? Action, adventure, you know, I'm a big fan of Lego. So yeah, Lego games themselves. And yeah, I mean, action, adventure, not a big fan of horror. I don't even like horror movies. I, I don't like horror movies. But action adventure stuff, that's always been my niche. All right, so we've gotten done with high five, seven, eight, nine questions. Now we're going to go all the way down to D man underscore made it. What's your favorite Marvel director and project? All right, so I did a ranking of this. Uh, you guys can go check out that ranking if you want to to get my full analysis thoughts. But my favorite Marvel director since it was a year ago is the Russo brothers. And my favorite MCU project is the Winter Soldier. But. Avengers Infinity War objectively is better. Uh, what's your favorite DCEU director and project? I mean, Zack Snyder's pretty cool. Patty Jenkins is amazing. I don't know yet. I am going to have to make a ranking of the DCEU director, so I don't know yet. But just think about Patty Jenkins and Zack Snyder, James Wan, mixed together to create, you know, I, I don't know. Just, yeah. I, I I love the DCEU and my favorite DCEU project. Check out that ranking I did. You know, check out my all ten DCEU movies ranked video. That link is in the description. Do you have a favorite Disney show? Ooh, I grew up on Casey Undercover. Well, I didn't grow up on it, but you know, when Casey Undercover came out, I was watching it. Good luck, Charlie. I grew up on Good Luck, Charlie. I grew up on Proud Family. Proud Family was a good one. Me and you, but well, I'm just being tight. Family every single day and night. Like, y'all remember that. Like, y'all had to remember that uh, Disney show. That's So Raven. Oh, my God. The best Disney Channel intro is That's So Raven. And That's So Raven is one of the greatest Disney Channel shows ever. Like, I binged That's So Raven throughout 2020, and it was awesome. Um... What else? Another show. Wizards of Waverly Place is pretty good. Fish Hooks. You know, I like Fish Hooks. And I can't think of any other ones, like, off the top of my head. I Didn't Do It. Kicking It was pretty nice. Ant Farm was pretty cool. So there's a lot of Disney shows. I mean, I grew up on Disney Channel. So, yeah, Disney Channel, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon. Those are the three channels that I would always switch from. So, yeah, I, I enjoy all of the Disney shows. But the one that comes to mind is Casey Undercover, Good Luck, Charlie, Raven's Home. And uh, that's so Raven. Random. Do you prefer the recent-ish first live-action TMNT or the second? Which villain was your favorite in that movie? Krang or Shredder? Shredder just had a better presence inside of the first one. And the first one was awesome. The second one was awesome, too. I don't know why people don't like those movies. I actually like those movies. I mean, I get why they don't like them, but I actually like those movies. The second one was more entertaining and felt more... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle-ish, like the cartoon, but the first one kind of went deeper into that mythology of it a lot, while also making the turtles bulletproof, but yeah, I think the first one was really great. I, I know you like the TMNT movies, like I remember me and you, we used to, we, that first TMNT uh, live action movie 2014, oh my god, we loved that movie, that, that movie was actually pretty great to me. Uh, can anyone portray Harley Quinn better than Margot Robbie? I can't think of anyone. Um, Tara Strong, actually, because Tara Strong played the voice of Harley Quinn in some of the, like, the DC animated stuff, so I think Tara Strong is actually, could, she could be a great Harley Quinn in live action, but Margot Robbie, she, she is awesome as Harley Quinn, I can't wait to see her in the Suicide Squad, she is gonna be a blast. When Black Widow comes out, do you think Scarlett Johansson will get better interview questions? That's, like, a long-running thing with Scarlett Johansson, she constantly gets, like, sexualized, uh, interview questions, or, like, Hey, how did you fit inside of the suit? Or did you wear underwear and stuff like that? I'm like, come on, guys. Just, just treat her the same way that you're going to treat Robert Downey Jr. or Chris Evans. Like, you know, you wouldn't ask Chris Evans. I mean, I would, but you wouldn't ask Chris Evans what type of underwear that he wears. You know what I mean? But I feel like as this being her movie, as, as this being like a female-led cast and a female director, I feel like she should get better interview questions. And I feel like she will get better interview questions. And I think you know, they'll actually do her fair, because recent interviews, even starting back with Civil War, she's been getting fair, better interview questions since 2016, so it was only like 2015 or like 2012 or 2015, that whole period, that's when she didn't, uh, Devontae Thomas writes, this is the same guy, this D-Man made it, and Devontae Thomas, they are the same guy, my best friend, 
uh, do you think you'll ever do a scene analysis anytime soon? I will, but um, I actually have something very special planned. And uh, somebody actually commented down below, will I ever do a Shrek franchise ranking or like a Shrek movie ranking or like a DreamWorks franchise ranking? The answer to that question is yes, I will do that. But I've been planning this ever since May of 2020. It's dealing with Shrek. It's going to be four parts. It's dealing with Shrek. I already got the thumbnails made. I'm going to watch the movies. I'm going to make just i'm gonna make some content about it hopefully that gets many views and then that can push me into the dreamworks season where i can rank the shrek movies and also kung fu panda and the franchises themselves that's what i'm trying to do i want this series that i'm making this four uh epic series to push me into the dreamworks world and i think that would be pretty cool but i think i guess that's what you want to call a scene analysis but it's going to be a film analysis so i think I, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I, I I love making stuff like that, especially like with me making my own tribute for Ninjago. Like how epic that that came out as. Like I don't care what anybody says. I think that tribute was awesome to me. So I want to do more analysis and more video essays like that, especially like the theory video that I made. Oh my god, that was so much fun. But you know, I I just love doing stuff like that. All right, moving on. Cow's X Bricks writes. Which is worse, The Island or Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitsu? Personally, I think Secret of the Forbidden Spinjitsu is really underrated and treated harshly. It's probably the worst season, but it's still good in my books. And doesn't deserve the hate it gets. No, I, I agree with you, man. I agree with you. The Fire Chapter doesn't deserve all the hate that it gets. It works as like being this first season or like this, our first look into the, the newer Ninjago. Our first look into post-Masters of Spinjitsu Ninjago. I think all of that works. Like, it works. But the island is worse. The, the island is worse than Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitsu. Like, not by a mile, but it, it, it is worse. Like, it, it is worse by two points. And, you know, the fire chapter, I, I like the fire chapter. I love the colors. It just attracts me. I think if I had to rewatch the ice chapter or the fire chapter, I'm picking the fire chapter. It's just so much more enjoyable and fun. But the ice chapter... It's, it's objectively better. Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitsu is a whole lot better than the island. But we're going to have to see how the island and Seabound connect to each other. So then we can actually get a gist of like, okay, what is this overall story? And if it connects to Seabound in a great organic way, the island could move up higher than Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitsu for me. Alright, these are our last two questions. Giraffe Guy Studios writes, How did you think of the channel name? Again, my teacher... She called me S-Dub, and I was like, S-Dub, huh? And then it took me like a couple months, and then 2019, February, my first Ninjago video on the channel, ranking the intros, February 2019, I announced that this will be the new channel name, S-Dub Nation. And that's what kind of pushed me into where I am today. So that's how I thought of my channel name, Giraffe Guy Studios. All right, this is our last question of the day. One, two, three, Legos writes, can you do a face reveal anytime soon? Do y'all really want a face reveal? Like, is that is that something that everybody wants? Like, do you guys really want a face reveal? I mean, if you guys want a face reveal, I do a face reveal. Like, just give me a couple of days, you know, after I get done with like recording vids and stuff. But if you guys really want a face reveal, comment down below if you if you like if that's something that you would be interested in, because. I mean, if that's something that you guys would be interested in, I can't really say no, right? I, I, I can't say no to that, right? But, okay. Um, I'm done. Part one is done. Part two may be longer because BBBM sent in lots of questions. And we're going to get through those in part two. But this is part one. Please know that you will hear a little bit of an echo because I'm not in my original recording space. Please don't forget to check out that Twitter that's going to pop up on your screen right now. And also, please don't forget to check out that playlist up above for all of my Ninjago content that I have on my channel. Thank you guys so much for submitting any of your questions for the second ever Q&A for S-Dub Nation. Please don't forget to check out the links down below in the regular podcast. Like, comment, and subscribe, guys. And I will see you all next time. Peace.